Back in 1901, dentist Fred McKay, Colorado Springs in the U.S., made an interesting observation. He was treating some children, and he noticed that their teeth were modeled. They had spots on it. But he also noted that there were no cavities. Why? Well, it turned out that the water was naturally high in fluoride, and this was protective. And this started the whole notion of adding fluoride to drinking water to prevent cavities. It was controversial from the beginning with some suggesting that this was a communist plot to undermine the health of Americans. Well, the controversy has continued unabated, and it was reinforced recently with this paper that appeared in the Journal of the American Medical Association, very reputable uh, journal, suggesting that there was a link between fluoride consumption by pregnant women and the IQ of their offspring at age three to four. Well, as you know, in science, numbers matter. A difference of two to three points in IQ is not likely to be highly significant. But more important is to take a look at how they estimated the amount of fluoride that the pregnant women were ingesting, because this is notoriously difficult. Such estimates are done with questionnaires, where they are asked, how much water did you drink? What kind of water? What did you eat, etc." This is notoriously unreliable, First of all, people can't really remember what they ingested properly. And uh, second uh, is that they may not know the fluoride content of what they were consuming. For example, if someone were eating ice cream, that ice cream contains water. Do you know where that water came from? Was it fluoridated? No idea. You'd have to make a guess. What about chocolate syrup? Well, that contains water. If you made a glass of chocolate milk with this, how much fluoride are you adding? Bottled water. Well, in this particular case, you could make a guess because it actually says on the label 0.1 parts per million of fluoride. But not every bottle of water has such information. This one has essentially no nutritional information. Tells you nothing. Not surprising given where it comes from. So what do we make of this? Uh, to tell you the truth, I don't put too much emphasis on, on this study because I think there was too much estimation in how much fluoride the women were ingesting. And uh, if you're ingesting the normal amounts of, of fluoride, uh, I don't think it is going to have an effect on the IQ. But again, that is just guesswork. But what is not guesswork is the fact that if you use fluoridated toothpaste, and I'm not pushing this one because there are many fluoride toothpaste, that certainly can reduce the incidence of cavities, as can using dental floss. It is true that today we're not quite sure about the value of adding fluoride to drinking water because, at least in the Western world, children are going to dentists, they're getting fluoride treatment, they're using fluoridated uh, toothpaste, they're getting uh, fluoride from their food. It may not be necessary to add it to, to water. But nevertheless, I don't think that we have to worry about the population being dumbed down uh, in terms of their IQ because pregnant women are ingesting too much fluoride. I think that there are bigger concerns in pregnancy. You worry about the amount of mercury that you may be ingesting, the amount of lead or perhaps endocrine disruptors. But one thing for sure about this study is that it will create more controversy. Uh, there will be the fluoride proponents who say that the study is meaningless, and there will be the opponents who say that uh, adding fluoride to drinking water is causing us to become more and more dumb. Truth, of course, is always in between the extremes.